people would be stunned slash not stunned how little Frankie and I know about any of this. Give me a dumb question. Let's do it. Dumb question time. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. It's the three man show today. Frankie Borelli, Trent Ryan, and Daniel Rappaport. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Four Play Podcast. We're about to roll right into Olympic golf. You were talking worldly golf. We got a couple guys out here that love the game of golf. We're going to talk golf. We're going to talk food. We're going to talk our favorite interests. This is a podcast. Hopefully it works. I, I'm acting like this is the first podcast we've ever done, and I'm like selling people on the fact I that. I do feel hey, like when Riggs is not here, there's a certain anarchy um, yeah, it is. That, that, that comes across Substitute the crew. Substitute teacher. Yes, yes. We got to roll in, roll in the TV. You watch some Bill Nye Science Guy. You know, a lot of people like to give Riggs shit, right? And, and some of it's well deserving with his swing. He knows he has a bad swing. And like, if you're going to put your swing out there, you're going to get shit on. Also, if you're not on the show, you're going to get shit on. Yep. So at the end of the day, uh, he does get a lot of shit. But the thing that he doesn't get enough credit for is he's a fantastic host of a podcast. He really is. Um, he can talk kind of monologue just like, I mean, that that takes a certain skill to be able to go on like those those long talks about things and have like facts presented and like go into the history of the game. He is good at that. Dan, you're also fantastic at that. I, this is not one of my strong suits, Trent. I know that you don't fall in that category as well. So when no it's a chance. Dan Riggs show, you're getting a lot of information at you and you know that it's coming from a reliable source with us. We're wild cards. Um, so when I have to like run the show or if I have to start the show, it's a bit of a fucking joke. You know, it's a fucking yeah. joke. You said, as soon as you logged on, you said, what are we going to talk about? So that sort of yeah. set the tone for everything. It is the Olympic golf week. So maybe we start there. I am yep. actually quite excited for this week. It's the first Olympics where everyone's actually playing. The, the 2016 one in, uh, in, in Brazil, everyone blamed Zika because they just didn't want to go. No one knew. It was the first, it was the first uh, Olympic golf competition in like 112 years. And everyone was like, I don't know what this means. And it was in the middle. Of, that was when the schedule was a little bit different. They still had the PGA Championship coming in august so it was like they didn't really want to go do that and then tokyo was a disaster with with covid like they're, they're just the restrictions were crazy and so this is the first so a lot of guys pulled out for that reason so this is the first one where you know rory is there and scotty is there and victor hovland's there and ludwig is there and you know it's it's everyone's playing it's gonna have a little john rom is there it's gonna have a bit of a major feel i'm excited for it i see scotty and meredith have been taking in the events they were they've been pretty much i feel like to every single I mean, there's so many events at the Olympics. I want to go one day. I'm not a huge Olympics guy, but I bet it's fun to just be able to sort of flip flop back and forth between all these incredible events. Um, How easy is it to do that? I mean, you're talking entering and re-entering massive stadiums. Like, is it as easy as like, let's go to as an athlete. You have probably like an all access pass, right? Like you can go to everything. Right. I would think. Right. But like, it's like, all right, we're going to go to beach volleyball. It's behind the Eiffel Tower. And then we're going to go to fencing. It's like on the other side of Paris. And then like, I mean, they're at all these things, the swimming, like, where's that? I mean, you're entering, it's like going to a basketball game and then like, then going to a hockey game. And then it's crazy. I mean, they're entering he and takes, re-entering stadiums. He takes that baby fucking everywhere, everywhere. That yeah. baby, that baby, like some people it's, it's like, um, I feel like some famous people, when they have a baby, they put like the heart emoji over the baby's face for a while. Like they don't want people to see the baby's face, which I don't really get like what utility mm -hmm. that's really serving. He's got that baby. It's like a football. He had it with him when he went to Colorado. He had it with him when he won the golf tournaments. He's got it with him in swimming. That baby. It, yeah. That it, baby's it. around. I always feel weird about calling a baby it. Sometimes I, you know, you had it with you. You had that. You got that thing with you. You got that thing. You're holding on to that thing. You like would think. Purse. When they're setting up he's the also Olympics, got his, he also has his, his social media back and that's he's gotten access to it. So I don't know if he hands it off to people when he's on that run, but you can just tell he's posting eating crepes in Paris and he's posting certain types of food, playing ping pong, playing ping pong. Him and Ted Scott are like playing tennis and stuff. So you could just tell that he's like kind of getting back to being Scotty Scheffler, just the person as opposed to like Scotty Scheffler, the Terminator that has two phones, one of them being like a a tournament phone where he doesn't answer my text or anything. So hopefully we're going to get him Scotty back in Corp. our world here. Yeah. yeah he's Scotty uh, Corp. I think he is trying to make an effort to be like a little bit more approachable. You know, he said that at the open, he's like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm realizing that like when I'm nice to people, it like makes their entire day. And so I'm kind of trying to lean into that a little bit more. I think he's, you know, you can't be the, it's hard to be the number one golfer in the world and be 27 years old and just be like a, one of those guys who hands your phone off to other people. I think Bryson's showing that like, if you just give it a little bit, little bit of personality, a little bit of, of authenticity, it goes a long way. 
haven't felt it here yet in bright waters, <laughs> New York, but well, at some point, maybe he'll start being nice to me. It is what it is. You know, I'm just going to keep grinding at it. This episode of Foreplay is presented by Chevy. Get the crew together and head off to the golf course in the new 2024 Chevy Traverse with impressive cargo room, three row seating, and the first ever Z71 trim. Traverse can handle your buddies and their golf bags with ease. Do not be that guy that buys a new golf, uh, buys a new car or truck and can't fit the golf clubs in there. There's nothing worse than buying something as expensive as that, as big of a purchase as that, and not being able to do the things that you want to do. Wouldn't you agree with me, fellas? I would agree with that. And my family is a golfing family. My mom loves to golf. My dad obviously loves to golf. He's been on the channel. You know what they have? A Chevy Traverse. They are it's a, it's a, a Traverse big car. family. I noticed in Europe, a lot of baby cars can't fit golf clubs in there. Wouldn't want one. You just got to fit things in cars. Like there's so many, you know, everything's coming in bigger boxes these days and everything's just larger. It's not like you don't just like get in the car with your little knapsack anymore. Like you go into the store and you're bringing home big, big items and you just need to have you need to have the room. So make sure that you're checking out the Traverse. They also have the best in class 17.7 inch diagonal color touchscreen among three rows uh, among three row SUVs. So they're the first one that they've ever done the best in class and auto sense power lift gate traverse has elevated the tech game. Plus you don't have to leave anything behind because the redesigned traverse offers best in class max cargo volume and seating for up to eight passengers. Not to mention the RS comes standard with the one touch automatic second row and power folding third row head over to Chevy.com slash traverse to build your own and learn more Chevrolet together. Let's drive. What do we think of the format of of the of golf in the Olympics? I know John Rahm made some comments earlier, like he would prefer if there were more team events. As I mean, right now it's it's just an individual event. But like, what do you do? You think there should be a, more of a team aspect? I kind of agree with Rahm. Well, what is the official breakdown of like of of the format? It's just stroke seventy two hole stroke play. straight up. Just six, play. sixty guys, seventy two hole stroke play. It Top seems like three a guys medal. That's it. Top three guys medal. Yeah, there was a there was a big playoff last last time for the you know if there's a if there's a tie they play off. Kind of like that though, like first, second, third medals at the Olympics. It's kind of cool. You know? Yeah, but I think it'd be cool if you had two man teams or something. The problem is that not every country has like two guys in it. The, the Americans have four. All the other countries that you would expect have two, like England, South Africa, you know, Spain. And then there's a lot of countries that have one guy who's going on because he, he qualified on their own. But yeah, I think it'd be cool if it was a two-man team, some sort of team competition. You want to see the guys interact with each other. It doesn't happen very often. I know? think the more team golf, the better. We've been saying that for, everybody's been saying that forever. It's just like Ryder Cup's great. President's Cup is great. And it's, you know, it's got the the part where you're playing for your country. So you might as well make it a team. But for now, it's just a straight up stroke play event, which is also interesting. I don't I don't mind it just being a stroke play, but some sort of team thing in the olympics would be cool but that's not gonna happen anytime soon do you think when professional athletes that go over to the olympics and play in their respective sports in the olympics do you think they kind of uh, church it up for everyone for how much they care about it as opposed to like the people that actually like that's their pinnacle of their sport if you're a swimmer if you're a diver if you're if you're a track and field runner if, whatever it might be like the olympics is the olympics you cry when you achieve your goal like I don't know. I just sometimes I, I, I feel like like a Scotty Scheffler is playing in this tournament. Like he'd obviously rather win the Masters. He'd like the pinnacle of his sport is somewhere is elsewhere. So I don't know. Do you guys feel like they kind of church it up? Like they get caught up in the I'm playing for the gold. Like it's really not as I don't know. Not that they're faking it, but like they almost have to act well, like it's well, the it biggest is, thing it, in the world. It is an it interesting dynamic. Yeah, you're right because it is an interesting. That, yeah, it's the Masters is the pinnacle of golf or one of the major championships. Where yeah, and and even in soccer, it's the same way. I'm watching the soccer Olympics in the background here, and it's like there was just the Euros. There's just the Copa America. There's there's all these other competitions that sort of cuck the Olympics. The Olympics is a bit of a cuck if we're being honest when it comes to other sports. But yeah, the individual sports like the archery or the or the that's it. you know the high jump like that's it. You got your world championships, which no one pays attention to. And then I was watching the I was watching equestrian yesterday. I've never. Yeah fucking watch equestrian for one minute in my whole life <laughs> no for once every four years well yeah i think xander won the gold and then everyone was still like this guy can't win the big one yeah he really yeah, can't exactly. get it done and it's like i've got a gold medal but i you have to get swept up in the pageantry of it like that you, you're on that boat lebron's got the flag and everybody's like we're here we're for, we're fighting and we're playing for america i think you have to get swept up in that maybe you're in a bubble maybe it's not as important as the masters 
or the open championship or any, you know, those, but it's, it's still a gold medal. If you win it at the end of the day, you get to put that on your mantle. I totally agree. I mean, and specifically in hockey, it's like the biggest thing when uh, Sydney cross is it the biggest thing in hockey. It's not the biggest thing winning the Stanley cup is, but it's a pretty fucking big deal when it's, USA Canada for gold and Sidney Crosby scoring the golden goal in overtime and like all of Canada is losing their mind and they're crying and they're raising that Canadian flag like that's a pretty big deal um I mean the miracle on ice is like pretty fucking big right like that's as yeah, big as it gets big. someone would say that that's like the biggest moment in sports history 1980 Olympic team um so yeah I mean yeah I, I don't know I just Scotty just I, I only brought that up because you're looking at Scotty and he just doesn't get really excited about anything. So I'm, you I'm just looking psychoanalyze at psychoanalyze this guy more than yeah. anyone else in the world. I just you, you, I don't know. I you know, I, I don't know. He's just like he just kind of goes through life and he's just the best golfer in the world. And you just can't understand how I, I, we talked about Tiger a lot when I was on the show last time. I'm not gonna make this a whole Tiger show, but there's just and there's no one gonna be everyone, there's never gonna be another Tiger Woods. But you just watch this guy. I've been going back and watching these videos on YouTube. And watching the full rounds, him at Beth Page, it was his 2002, uh, you know, him at the Masters in 2019, the full entire, even in 2019, the full, the full uh, coverage. He's just, it just looks like that guy's there for like the reason. And for some reason, I can't feel like that was Scott. It's just like, you can't believe he's playing that well. Like I'm watching him walking around France eating crepes. Like you never would see Tiger Woods doing anything like that. In a million yeah. years. But this guy's the best golfer that we've seen a long time. They're very Aura. different in terms of how they approach. The most different. Yeah. I mean, Tiger was scary and Scotty is not. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I just can't pin it. Like I'm following on Instagram. Like this guy's about to play for the Olympics. And then I'm thinking, like, does he even care about the Olympics? And then it starts to make me think, do any of these guys actually care about the Olympics? It really just sends me on a tizzy. Do you think that Scotty would trade his year for Xander's year? Or do you think that he's not at the point yet in his career where... Like Rory, the only thing that matters is majors. And Rory would probably trade 15 PGA Tour wins for one major. But do you think Scotty would trade with Xander? No. I don't think that's even... I, I don't think you can even come close to trading with Xander. I know he won two majors, but I two don't... Two majors. He won two majors I know, in one year. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, man. He won the Masters. He won the Masters, and then he also won the biggest elevated events all year. He made so much fuck you money. Also got arrested for something he didn't even do wrong. His personal brand exploded through the roof. Like, he is... Scotty Scheffler now. He's got all this history to him. He's got this weird whole arrest thing looming over his 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 aura that you always just remember. And we sold a bunch of shirts over. It's just it was just a hell of a year for Scotty. I had not won the year. Masters, maybe, but he won the Masters. It's the Masters true. over it, everything, man. It's it's we don't talk enough about the fact that the top two golfers in the world, one of them's last name is Scheffler, and the other one's last name is Shoffley. Yeah, it's nuts. I it's guarantee just, that confuses so many like. 55 year old women who are watching the who are watching the pga tour with their with their husband and are like i oh shoffley's winning and it's actually scheffler it's got to be a and whole it's not mess. even like fitzgerald or, and fitzpatrick where it's like two pretty common names like those are not real names i don't yeah. know anyone else named scheffler or shoffley and they're right. just the number one and number two golfers in the world right now if you're trying to learn how to pronounce words that's really that's a lot for you to handle i actually saw a funny instagram the other day where it was like it was a teacher he was like in front of a whiteboard and he's like it was O-W-L. And he's like, owl. Right? So then the little kid was like, owl. Like he was playing like a little kid. He's like, owl. He's like, correct. And then he put a B in front of it. And he's like, what's this word? And the guy's like, bowel. He's like, bowl. <laughs> and he's just like, why? <laughs> like, and he went through all the words like that. It was very, very funny. The English language is so difficult to learn. Right. Growing up with it is a blessing because there are uh, so many things like that where it doesn't make sense, where I'm pretty sure in a lot of other languages, what they what they try to do is make it as easy as possible so it makes sense english is just like fuck it we'll do whatever we want yeah yeah no it's tough like soft consonants and all that like there's soft there's hard there's like different ways to say different i don't know danny would know more than us obviously well no i mean sure. like the whole like o-u-g-h thing is really really hard to sort of understand yep rough right. tough you know through is that right that would through is right? yeah through yeah but that's <laughs> through, different through should be thruff Right. right through shit right if you have rough and through like how can you possibly <laughs> explain that to somebody <laughs> yeah you had the th in front of thruff. it and just change the complete yeah it's thruff you hit it yeah you gotta you gotta um, run thruff the rough danny and i said i'm not gonna talk about tiger this whole time but i might um so i've been going back watching this guy play 
And I've noticed that when, and this is just the game of golf evolving, but you weren't on the other day when we talked about this. Tiger Woods essentially, and I don't know what the stat was, he used an iron off the tee so often when he was on that run that I don't even know if it's possible for someone to go on a run that he went on ever again because you have to use driver every single hole essentially and just rip as hard as you can. It's the hardest club to hit consistently, like especially to the level that these guys have to. Like when he played at Beth Page, he was just ripping a little iron off every single tee. And I'm like, of course he was dominating. He was hitting like a four iron, 275 yards, and he had an eight iron in, and he was just the best iron player in the world. He was so much better than everyone else. And now you can't do that. Like, he can't do that. So is that, is it even his tries. back or is his leg or all these things? Or is it just the fact that the game is just different than when he dominated it? It's both. I mean, he still tries. I noticed this at, uh, at Troon. He, he's so conservative off the tee, like, because I think he, you know, I, I, I think he's still, he won a lot of tournaments playing that way. And I think it's really hard to convince yourself to do something differently. But you're right. It's, it's a combination of things. Equipment has made a big difference. Like, guys, Tiger's talked about this a lot. The drivers become, you know, a lot easier to hit. And so guys can swing harder than they used to before without fear of the big miss. You, know, you look at someone like Bryson who swings out of his shoes and really, I mean, doesn't hit that many wild shots. The misses aren't that magnified. And so when you have 20 or 30 guys who are going to do that and are going to be hitting drivers all the way down there, you're, you're giving up 30, 40, 50 yards of them if you're hitting these irons. It's just not, it's just not going to work. You're, you're, yeah. you're just giving up too much. And, and you're right. It has definitely brought everyone together. The, because Tiger, he was, first of all, he was stronger than everybody because no one else really worked out. And so he was, he looked different. He had way more speed. And so he was, he was stronger. The equipment was worse. And also, you know, this, the, the stats and, and, and understanding stuff like, you know, I, I, I want to S, uh, uh, asterisk, 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 faucet. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to say his name, but. He hit, you know, what he what he did and sort of turned that golf into a lunatic <laughs> dick. bit of a math problem. But, uh, he's he's so good though. He knows so I mean, I'll call him a dick for the rest of my life, but he, he Why is he he's a dick in his own way. Gym, he also knows because of the, the Jim Nance thing? No, no. He's I actually find him to be very enjoyable in person. I just think he's just like comes off like a dick. Like I know it all. He knows that though. Like, you know? He's not yeah. he's not a mean person. He's not a bad person by any means. He's just a fucking dick. Like you oh, look at Scott Fossey. Like, he's a, a he's a Twitter dick. reply guy, but he's got a really good a, point. He's an asshole. Like uh, he dude, he he has the answer for golf. Like no one has the Yeah, answer he figured for golf. it out. He figured and, it out. And he's like, "Oh, like women should never not hit driver." And it's just like, "All right, like you probably don't say that on Twitter." He's just like, "It's true. I have the fact." Yeah. Right? He's like, "They're not long enough to ever hit any club other than driver off the tee. I don't even care what the whole, whole calls for." And yeah. like everyone's like, why are you saying that? He's like, I have all the stats to back it up. And he's true. I think it's like, kind of refreshing. Right. It's kind of refreshing how he like just I doesn't love give a the shit. video I did with him. He he made me laugh out loud with how much how forward he was with things. You know? Yeah, he's like, it's just it's just wrong. It's just what they say. It's just <laughs> yeah, false. Yeah. Or just the everyone is like, yeah, Tiger Woods. I was like, eight iron. He's like, wrong. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Yeah. If you look yeah, at he'll the look at a diagram, video of Tiger Woods seven. and be like, Tiger Woods had no idea what he was doing. Like he'll he'll say that out loud. Um but no, but what I was saying was you know, him him turning golf into like a bit of a math problem and showing clearly that closer to the hole is better, closer to the hole is better, closer to the hole is better. That's changed a lot of guys' strategies. And every drivable par four now, everyone goes for it. Didn't used to be the case. Guys, like you said, would hit four iron and then, you know, hit a little wedge in there and give yourself 10 feet for birdie. It's not good enough anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it really just got me down. And I know there's a lot of things to get down about uh, in terms of like where Tiger used to be and where he is now, but. It was just, man, like the game just has evolved so much. And every sport has. You watch a highlight from hockey in 2000 and guys aren't scoring goals the way that they used to. And you're like, damn, I wish like a Matt Barzell was playing back then because like the way he's playing now would be better or whatever. Uh, Yeah, it's just it's just it's saddening to watch like that style is just like not even possible anymore. It might be when they when they when they roll the golf ball back. It's possible. What's happening with that? 20, 20, 28. So that's official. That is official. Unless there's a change, yeah, that is that is going like to that's gotten to effect. swept under the rug. Like we don't talk. Well, it's about just that so ever. far away, and it and it's not going into effect for, um, for amateurs until 2030. So it's you know, that's not a real. That's not a that's thing. Not a time. <laughs> that's, not, that's never happened. Think about how crazy this year has been. Imagine surviving another six day at a time. Oof. Day at a time.
a whole, like you talk about this election, you got you got all four years, you got another election to go through, and then that president's going to be two years into that before a new golf ball comes out. I mean, what's the world going to look like in twenty thirty? It's going to be all AI. It's going to be all robots. It's going to have a robot president. Get ready for the season with the official sunglasses brand of Barstool Sports, Shady Rays. Our friends have you covered with their newest and boldest premium polarized shades. They're kicking off their most anticipated release of 2024 with a limited edition debut of their rival collection. This is new single lens style in Barstool Blue with the premium stools and stars lens etch. If you're a Barstool fan, if you want to look good, if you've got that kind of style that you can rock that Barstool Blue, make sure you're checking out that new Rival collection. It's a limited edition release. And if you're looking for something more casual, the classics are also getting the Barstool treatment. Both of these styles are perfect for all day, every day, comfort and performance. They have hundreds of options to choose from. So you're bound to find the perfect pair for your style, Danny Rap. I feel like you're a sunglasses guy on the golf, uh, sunglasses on the golf course guy. Yeah, they. I mean, they all the all the literature, all the science says that you, you should wear them, and it's that's really bad for your eyes. You're gonna have to get like LASIK later in life. You don't want to do that. Throw on a nice pair of sunglasses. Give your eyes a break. Shady rays are the best there are. There and there's shady no, rays are the best there are. And there's no risk with Shady Rays. Their team will always have your back with personal and fast support. They have worry-free um, returns. You can exchange for a new pair or return them within 30 days. So head to ShadyRays.com and use code 4 for 35% off polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the Shades rated 5 stars by over 300,000 people. That's ShadyRays.com, code 4, F-O-R-E, for 35% off polarized sunglasses. I think about this a lot. I have a recurring nightmare of looking out the window and seeing the mushroom cloud. And it's now seeping into my everyday viewing of the landscapes. So like there was a time I was sitting outside on an Adirondack chair looking out at a golf course and the city was in the background. It was at Liberty National. And I remember just thinking like this is such a beautiful view right now and i'm like what if i just watch like a laser beam just come straight down and just like explode that whole city across like like is that gonna happen one day like you know what i mean like like the whole thing is just gonna get like bombed and i'm like that that's what's in my brain now like just like fear of like nuclear war it's like seeped into my just like when i look out of the window of a plane or something and i'm looking down i'm like fuck man imagine seeing that thing coming down it's a nightmare i used to th- i used to think every time i was going in an airplane that like we were gonna go down and i would look I would look around and see who was going to hijack the plane. You know, do you ever do that? Yeah. You ever do that? <laughs> now, every every now flight. I've, now I've gotten, now I've kind of gotten over it a little bit where I'm not every super flight. afraid. And I actually think, <laughs> so we, we flew back. I flew from Helsinki to Los Angeles on Sunday night, which was a crazy route. You go over like Greenland and something about, they have, they have, um, they have a uh, plane cam now where, yeah. where they have like a camera on top of the, Mm. on top of the plane and you can watch the plane and for some reason seeing that made me very it made me feel good about the about the plane it was just this massive plane that wasn't moving it wasn't getting thrown around in the wing it was like this thing is on a one-way track to los angeles california and it made me feel better about air travel that's good because i yeah I've, I've gotten better about air travel as well when i first started flying a lot i my palms would sweat my whole body would sweat and i would think what you guys are thinking like this thing's going down i would read the flight number like dl Four one five eight, and be like, can like I picture crash. that on CNN? Can I picture them like breaking <laughs> yeah. in and being like United ninety three? Right. So it was used to be stuff like that, but then you fly enough and it goes well enough times, pretty much all of the time, and you're just kind of like, I got no control. That's the what. That's what helped me with my flight anxiety. It's gonna sound the opposite of like being more relaxed, but you really have no control once you get on. You're just like, all right, I'm on this thing now, and we're gonna see what happens. Did you Same guys ever end the- up watching Fallout the show? No, no. So I, I talk. I, I said, if you guys ever watch it, the, the first episode will really ignite this fear in your brain. And it's literally that nightmare that I have about that mushroom cloud happening in like Los Angeles, right? Like, and it, they they depict it so perfectly that it like it hit a it registered somewhere in my brain that like I can't get it out. And I watched it three months, four months ago, where it's like they're all at like a party, and they're like it's just like something like a big b- bright light happens like in the distance and you see it on his eye like just to expand and it's just like holy fuck and they're going nuts they're screaming 
So, yeah, I mean, like I'm living my life in constant fear right now, which is not something that I really want to be doing. But we also get to go out there and nip wedges and read. How was filming at Sabonic? How did that how did that come to we were talking about on the last show how that's actually it's a big it's a big step for the YouTube golf community, because like now if a golf course says, oh, you know what? It's like, well, fucking Sabonic is letting people film out there and it costs twenty seven million dollars to join that place. Yeah, no, it's I think with the amount yeah, I mean, I don't know how much is like public with it, but I think it's considered one of the more expensive golf courses in the world. For if sure. Not the, if not the um, super exclusive, like a certain percentage of maybe like over 50% of the NFL owners belong there. It's a, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous spot. Um, yeah, I don't know how that all happened, but I'm very happy it did. So that match, I think, is out as of right now. So good yeah. call to that. I played Matt Barzell. It's on YouTube. It's on Rumble. Um it is an amazing time for me. I'll let you guys all watch it. I won't spoil it too much. But yeah, the footage is out of control. Aside from a great match, aside from playing, you know, the star player on my favorite team, which is just like psychotic. Like you look, I got little bobbleheads. I mean, I have. I mean, he's not gonna. He's gonna think it's weird because like now he's my friend. What do you got? You got a statue of Matt Barzell? I mean, I got like a crazy little bobblehead of his, right? Or like you stick. They actually here. did a good job with that. That looks like him, right? Doesn't it? The little lighthouse, Matt Barzell. They got the hair. I mean, it looks unbelievable. He's never going to return. He's going to see this and never return a text. No, actually, I got yeah. So um, I was I talked to a mutual friend who knew someone out there, and the guy out there that got us out is like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, And they were all into it, dude. We met a lot of the people from like the front office out there. They came out and they talked to us, and it was pretty freaking cool. They rolled out the red carpet. It was a great day. Um, we played with like the head pro for the back nine. We played with this guy, Troy, that I think he's like in charge of all like the events out there. And it was unbelievable, man. It was a great day. Like it was raining in the beginning. We thought we weren't going to get out. And then all of a sudden it was just like overcast, like Scotland sky, like dark gray clouds with all the dunes. And it's a Jack Nicholas, Tom Doak course, which is just very yeah. bizarre. Like, I think it's the first one so, they ever did together. Maybe the only one they ever did together. So he, when we played him, um, when he in the Islanders scramble a couple of years ago, he was like a six or a seven. He's gotten better since then. Is that what I yeah, think Rick I said? He's like a two he's or a three. One eight. Yeah, he's like a one eight two now. Pumping. Oh damn! So pumping. Yeah. Well, he's got a lot of lot of leg, lot of leg power. Ah, oh, he's just so good looking. And yeah, just I mean, if you're, it's a great video. Honestly, it's going to look great on the TV. You, you throw it up on the TV. Just go look for Sabonic. And we've been getting some feedback. Like all the old school Barcelona golf videos used to be so good. Used to learn a little bit about the golf course used to hear from people that worked in the um, in the clubhouse that have a lot of knowledge about it. You know, a lot of the times we're going on these travel series and we're just playing like a scramble or we're doing whatever and we're trying to get in and get out and make it 30 minutes. We really took our time with this one that we droned every single hole. We talked to a guy that was employee number one at Sabonic. He has great stories of the place. He gives great insight into all the little nooks and crannies of the golf course, the clubhouse, the whole entire deal. So, I mean... Just just to be able to show the world this course, it's the first video ever on YouTube, aside from maybe like a flyover once in a while that they've done. No one's ever really played hole by hole ever there, and it's never been a YouTube video out there. So super excited, super excited to have that out. Um, yeah, and then we've got more stuff coming out as well. It's so, been I mean, the Frankie channel for a little while. It's been, you've been fucking, it's all, it's Frank, Frank, Frank these days. Yeah, I mean, I'm tr- I'm trying to grind at the, at, at like keeping it consistent with like, at least we get a couple of videos up a week. Um, but we got a lot of things cooking right now. I know you have some videos in the can. Trent, uh, we've talked about this. He's starting to film Breaking 85. That's coming out. And then we also have another video series that's about to start that I think people are going to be pretty excited about, which we'll hold on to. Um, but we're going to wait for, yeah, we'll wait to talk about that. And then we've got more stuff on the horizon. I mean, we're, have we talked about where we're, we're going to like Hawaii? Have we talked about that? I, that's the first time hearing of it. No, you're going to it. When is it? <laughs> Like October, in October. I like I think. Hawaii. I like Hawaii. Yeah, you do yeah, like Hawaii. Like Hawaii. Hawaii rules. I go, to, I go to Hawaii all the time. I'm fucking. Down. You're 100 going to it. It's way that's on easier Brendan for me. Brendan that hasn't. That's on Brendan that hasn't uh, relayed that information yet. But um, no, yeah, we're we're running that trip back with good good, and I'm pretty sure we're going to Hawaii. So I think that's holy gonna be great. We, shit. Yeah. yeah, we did that last They've year. In the serious over over, uh, they got some new guys. They've got a lot of new. Sean is is now. In like he basically replaced Quan, which is kind of interesting. He was his guy. He was his guy. He's. I'm he's who, about- I never know who's officially in and who's officially out. That's I never know. 
Well, they have they have like their core guys, which is still like Garrett. I think Brad has become like a really core guy. Steven, Steven Sharf, Sharf, yeah, and Bubby, yeah. That's kind of the core. But then they they kind of have like a rotating cast of guys. Like I know Pujols. I don't know if he still does stuff for them. Albert Pujols, his kid, and yeah. then they have um, Sean's been doing a lot of stuff. Sean's playing in the in the creator thing uh, at East Lake with Brad and Garrett. Um, so yeah, they 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 keep they keep shuffling it. I think there's some like older guys though that creator thing you're going to be um announcing that right that's going to be on yeah. espn plus it's on every single I, I where is it not i saw the list it was like espn plus peacock youtube pluto roku they're like basically blasting it out to anyone who will listen yeah i i mean yeah we've gotten a lot of emails about it a lot, i mean a lot of dms about it a lot of uh mentions about it on twitter I think it's. Cr- I mean, I think it's crazy that one of us is not playing in that thing. I'll be. I'll be straight honest. Like, I think, I think Trent not play, playing in East Lake is fucking. Right. I think it's. I think it's downright disrespectful at this point to not put like a Trent Ryan in that thing. Uh, for all the stuff that's happened, we you know we did a we did a corn ferry event. The amount of stuff that we do at PGA Tour events with our merchandise. I mean, we are. You know, I I think that Trent Ryan should a hundred percent just to have a guy in there or that Riggs. might not have or anyone. I, I just think Trent would be funny, right? He's like. He had one of the bigger moments in social media golf this year, breaking 90. They have a plaque out at the golf course. All the golfers are congratulating him on the PGA Tour. It became a huge moment, got a ton of views. Like, if you're talking about like big moments of 2024 with Tiger Woods, our video with that, and then Trent breaking 90, I just think he should get the look. I don't know. You know, I, yeah. I'm just defending our I'm defending our home turf here. Totally. At the end of the day, it's fucking nuts. Like you got uh, that Sean Walsh. It's like, I don't know. It is what it is. No, I think I think the reason, yeah, I mean, I I don't think the the list is finalized, so maybe there's maybe there's something still to come on that. But I think the reason why is because they were they're trying to make it like very much their their complaint with sort of a lot of other things is it doesn't like the the you know the the good good stuff and and the match is that it doesn't really feel like a golf tournament, like it's it's kind of a fun novelty thing and you have these like interactions, but there's not like you're not building to like a crescendo of like a golf tournament. And so I think they want to make it like a very competitive golf tournament. But you're right. It, it, we always talk about the 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 thought experiment of what would a you know a, a weekend average weekend golfer shoot in PGA Tour conditions, and this is actually the chance to do it. And like it's Trent is like the guy to do it, bro. I mean, you, you could go back and look at the footage and listen to the footage of our podcast from 2019 of us saying the PGA Tour, if they want to get the younger audience and our audience, they should have. Either the four man scramble join the field and we're tee off after the final guy and we like we just play as a scramble or we tee off on Wednesday and we play that golf course ex- exactly what they're doing in East Lake like the idea that we've had forever we're saying just show how the regular guy goes out there and plays and all those guys do deserve to be in there if you don't like every single one the good good oh, guys yeah. Pat Perez all those guys Dalkey every single guy that's playing in there Grant Horvat. Uh, he's in there right Grant's he's in there not. for sure he's not on the oh, list Grant's right now which is there? which is that's very stunning. interesting. He is like the, is he the guy right now? Is he like, I mean, him and Bryson, like, I mean, Grant, yeah, Grant's incredible. He just, he, he's, he's got a different type of mind, Grant Horvat. Like he just runs at a different pace and not what do you to mean say by the that? other guys aren't, I don't know. He just like, like, I just really enjoyed talking to him and like getting his thought process when we played against him. He just thinks like, he's like entrepreneurial in the, in the world of golf. Like he's always trying to learn like what kind of videos are you guys doing? What kind of camera are you using? Oh, like, and then he's filming, he has the camera in his hand and he wants to learn different types of shit. He was really impressive when I met him. And then when we did that podcast with him, he was even more impressive. He's got a great head on his shoulders. Um, and I just think that like, you could just tell him and his guy sky, like are just, they're like a good business and they're like on their own and they're crushing. They're absolutely yeah. crushing. They Taylor made loves them. Like they're, yeah, they're great. Yeah. No, I, 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 listen, let's clip this Alex Bush. Let's put it out there. We got it. I think Trent Ryan, we, you, you have, you're going to have 15 very serious golfers, not serious, obviously, but you know, guys who are competing for the trophy. Would it hurt anyone to put Trent in the last group and see what he shoots? Listen, my calendar is wide open during that time. So what do you think he'd shoot? It's so it's eight holes of stroke play and then top four advance to a, playoff on the ninth hole what are you shooting on those eight holes you think he's like hard he's like hard oh, like it's a hard golf course it's not one of these you know it's not like a, a 3m open you know where it's it's hard well dude this is why they got to put me in because that number i mean i'm i am getting much better and i'm like a, a competent golfer 
I can yes. put it out there and I'll be able to get the ball in the hole eventually. But it's going to be a, a high, a high, high number, I would imagine. Pretty how high. many times have you played? How many 18 hole rounds have you played since you broke 90? Uh, four, four or five. Okay. So you've been playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More so. Yes. Yeah. I, I, we, I think we're going to get trend in there. I think we got to start it. We got to start a ground swell momentum grassroots it i should, should say yeah i mean it's I probably come off sound like a little bitch about it but i just think from our point like I, I don't know i'm just standing up for like the stuff that we've done trend has done it's like shouldn't even need that that's crazy to me you know like we put in these years this guy was fucking like interviewing beef at like what tournament was that and what that was year was zurich. that the zurich classic in like 2016 like doing fucking videos it's just like Come on, man. These guys been around, you know, throw one to the old guy. No, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be the old guy either, but <laughs> fuck, I'm excited man. for these good, good to run it back with those. That was so much fucking fun. The first oh, time yeah. that really yeah, was. was. And we good. I mean, we've talked about it a lot, but we gelled with those guys even more than I think we assumed would we would like. We just didn't know it's different styles, different types of videos, but different yeah, generations. They're kids. I mean, they're a lot younger. Than they're younger. Most of yeah. Them are. I mean, they got, yeah. I mean, a donkey's in his 30s, right? Yeah, I think Bubby's right around our age too. No, I mean, Bubby's dude. one. Of them, he's not. I, Bubby's. Not I like, don't think so. Bubby Brad like is six. Brad's twenty six. Oh my god, I'm way off. Sorry, Brad. Um, Bubby's got to be. I don't know. I mean, Garrett's like twenty four, twenty five. Well, Garrett is. He's a Bubby, god amongst men. He's like he looks. Bubby. Looks okay, this great. is for eleven months ago. This is according to good good memes. So who knows? Luke is thirty. Bubby twenty six. Matt twenty four. Steve twenty four. Garrett twenty three. God damn. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I am yeah, the no. old guy, but it was great. <laughs> we're going to go to Hawaii with them. We're going to take our shirts off and shit. They're all going to be like the testosterone is going to be running through the fucking roof. They're going to be jumping in the ocean. I'm going to be sitting right, there. They're going to be like that scene in Top Gun Maverick. That, that's going to be them. 100%. And then they're going to, camera's going to flip to us and I'm going to look like Jabba the Hutt. 100%. <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. True. So yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's great. That's, and then that's, I've actually, gonna be- I've gotten closer with their guy Matt Kendrick, who I find to be very funny, and he's like the businessman. He's the Simon Cowell behind like YouTube golf. Yeah, he's the CEO, he, right? Uh, he's the CEO of Good Good, and he, yeah, he, I mean, he played in like that tournament that they had, um, like the most recent one where they gave it like a hundred grand to the winner and stuff. They're doing some big shit, man. But yeah, I'm excited now because I feel like we know them a lot more, and like our the respect for both brands, I think, is at like a higher level than where it was going into the first one. Like I we remember talked about dude, that a lot when, in the podcast, like yeah. Yeah, when we were there. We sat at different tables when we first that got first there. That first dinner, we was so like, it was so high school. It was like, ooh, is someone going to talk to Garrett? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. And now it's like that. I, I mean, I feel like when we see them again, it'll be like seeing like buddies. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um. So yeah, it'll be good. I mean, I don't know if they like talking about shit like that, like telling people where we're going and stuff. I mean, they won't know. But it'll be fine. It'll be, it'll be totally good. fine. Precision Pro offers the best range finders in golf. That's what it says here for me to read, and I'm here to tell you I'm it, that is true. And I know Trent agrees with me. I know Danny agrees with me. I know Riggs agrees with me. These things are solid. They are fast. They are accurate, and they are easy to use. Best range finder I've ever used. It really is. It's accurate. Front of the green, back of the green, good weight to it, magnet onto the cart. It's got everything, every, everything you need. And the Titan Elite Rangefinder, the Titan Elite, it's their new flagship product, the new gold standard for golf rangefinders, aluminum shell, IP67 dust and waterproof, Bluetooth connected features like GPS yardages and Find My Titan, and so much more. If you like the United States, you guys like the United States? I love the United States. The NX10 Rangefinder is an awesome rangefinder with interchangeable skins, including a variety of USA themes, so you can show off your U.S. pride. They also have a USA Premium Rangefinder soft case and may or may not be releasing a UA, USA-themed Titan Elite later this year. This is the best in the industry. It's got the best industry cover, uh, customer service with 90-day back guarantee, uh, money-back guarantee, easy warranty process, and 30% upgrade discount for returning customers. So... Head over to Precision Pro just like we did, precisionprogolf.com, and use code FOREPLAY, F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. And this is going to get you $30 off your next range finder. That's precisionprogolf.com with code FOREPLAY to get $30 off your next range finder. I'm playing with Wells Adams tomorrow. Yeah, who's uh, Wells our Adams? Our guy from Bachelor in Paradise, the bartender. 
Um, okay. Yeah, he's just like I played with him at when I played at Pinehurst leading up to the U.S. Open. I played with him, and he saw me play pretty well. Like I was, I was on it that day, and we had a great day. He's one of the, my favorite people I've ever played golf with. Just great vibes. Oh just yeah, fantastic vibes. He's a professional on camera bartender, and like I think his role. I'm not a big Bachelor in Paradise guy, but from what I've gathered, his role was to like be the guy that everyone would come up to and kind of like spill the secrets to and oh, spill cool. the tea on. And yeah. Yeah. he was like, he like, Hey, let's, come on, let's have a drink. He's you basically know? He, like the, the therapist of bachelor in paradise as the <laughs> yeah. bartender. He's very good at it and he's great on the show. I am. I'm not surprised whatsoever that he is a How's full on vibes guy on the golf course, because that's what he is. In great paradise. golfer. He's a great golfer. He's a Carmel guy, like from California. Oh, shit. Yeah, like you know, Pebble, like that whole that whole area. He's just like that's where he grew up. Um, I mean, his wife is Highland. Sarah Highland. Yeah, like he's got the whole deal going. The great hair, great face, great teeth. How do you feel, Trent? About I feel like Love Island is kind of kind of surpassed the Bachelor. These oh, days. it's dominating, dude. It's, dominating. Oh yeah, I, I've yeah. I mean, I still watch the Bachelorette and all that, but oh, it's getting its teeth kicked in, and it has you, been getting you, its teeth kicked in. For years now are you are you switching over i've always wanted to get into love island the only problem with it and it's sort of the way of the world now where there's an episode a night and it's not as conducive to i feel like live tweeting and that was sort of no, my thing not. right that was my thing from the beginning where it's like all right the bachelor or the bachelorette is on every monday i sit down for two hours and i just tweet about it and it was really fun and i love doing it and love island sort of changed the game and sort of streaming and all that sort of changed the game where there's no demand for that. So I might start watching it maybe, but I don't know. It's the, and it also seems like a lot to catch up on if there's, you know, an episode a day. Yeah, but it is really fun when you like get into it and you're just like, yeah, I can go to bed in two more hours. I could just watch two more. I'm not against it. I, I love, yeah. I mean, I've always kept my reality TV viewing circle very small. It's pretty much just been the Bachelor universe, universe with Paradise thrown in there too. Um, I just honestly feel like if I start widening my scope, I'll get addicted to it. And I won't do anything else but watch Love Island. Yeah, there's like four, 12 seasons in the UK that you, you know, there's, there's days and days and days of content. I am just realizing now that I got, I was in Scotland for 10 days and didn't hit a single golf shot. That feels like kind of sacrilegious. You didn't have your clubs? So I tried to bring my clubs. I'll tell the story. So I tried to bring my clubs and uh, I was in the airport and the woman was like, uh, oh, you got to bring your, your clubs around to the, to where the oversized baggage is. I was like, okay, no problem. And then she's like, you know, do you want to upgrade? Do you want to upgrade your trip? It's, it's, you know, $800 or whatever it was. And I was like, you know what? I do. I do. Wow. I was like, I haven't, you know, we've talked about uh, who flies where in this, uh, in, in, on this podcast before. <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've, it's been a good couple of years. And I said, you know what? This is an 11 hour flight. Oh, I'm going to upgrade. Treat yourself. So I, uh, yeah, so I upgraded. And then she's like, oh, now that you upgraded, I'll take your, I'll take your clothes over there. Like, no problem. They get a get a text as soon as I'm on the plane. The clubs just never got on the flight. So oh, just no. didn't. They just didn't get on the plane. So that fucking well, woman at British Airways. So then they went to Paris for some reason, and then they were like, "Oh, we can deliver them to you, you know, at some point this week in in uh, Troon." And I was like, "Well, I'm going to be at the golf course. I don't. You, you're not going to be able to just leave those clubs like on the on the door. I'm staying in some random apartment building. So I just told them to send them back to L.A." So I never had them. They finally came to LA last night. So I didn't even have the golf clubs. And then Emma was there and we went up to the Scottish Highlands, which is like, there's no golf courses up there. It's crazy. I only, my, my, my image of Scotland before this trip was just flat golf courses, right? Like the one yeah. you guys did a trip there where you play a bunch of flat golf courses that are next to the ocean and it's very pretty, but you, the Scottish Highlands are so different like so incredibly beautiful and so it looks like it looks like um like norway or iceland you know you've got these like super steep cliffs and these like locks we went to loch ness where the loch ness monster Whoa. is supposed to be hanging out didn't see him um and uh yeah so we just didn't we just didn't i just didn't play golf i haven't played golf in like two and a half weeks i'm gonna go hit some balls this afternoon and see if i can still play but i have I'm, I'm really happy i'm not playing in that fucking uh creator thing because i i feel like it's kind of nice I, I i put on a good show i i played well at the queue and now i can just like give them shit forever that i beat off them in the queue yeah seriously you saw that emo it's ass a, what is that is that a cow what is that what, what was that emo yeah, ass fucking 
they're called Highland Cows, and they only exist up there, and they literally have their things like brushed what? down in their face. It's so. You never seen that? You never. Funny. He put the music to it. You never saw that fucking that meme where he's like, "Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you." <laughs> Dude, look at, my, look at my look at my look at my Instagram. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Don't make me change my mind. Dude, look at the look Don't at the make Instagram. Don't change my I, mind. <laughs> you're, you're pretty good, Frank. You're singing always he's catch in a pop band. surprise. Yeah, we I got oh, really. speaking of which, if you want to come watch us play pop punk music like that, tomorrow night we'll be in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Pop punk is playing in Columbus, Ohio. And then the next night, Saturday, we're playing in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. So we're doing we're on the road, man. We're on the road. We're playing in Columbus, we're playing in Nashville. The boys are hitting the road. Actually, that's a great reminder for me to start fucking using my drumsticks and just start to build up my fucking calluses on my thumbs because it is not good when i just play for the first time in a three-hour show it's not like really you waited, too, you, you waited too Wait, long it's in like two so days you have golf calluses and drum oh, calluses? Dude, the, thumb, the thumb drum calluses like you had to see the bubble that was growing you could still see a little bit but they're soft ass thumbs right now man you could suck peanut butter off these things right now no problem so um, are your hands your hands are just torn up like twenty four seven then? Yeah, I mean I've got little baby hands like I mean soft like I'm not a fucking like man. No, are you grabbing a drumstick right now? I think you might be. Yeah, go see the guys pop punk on. It's in Columbus, and then where is it on Friday? Nash, uh, Nash, Columbus on Friday, and Nashville on Saturday. Nashville's at the Barstool Bar, and it's free. I think first come first serve, just like as if it's a bar. And then Friday tickets are on sale, so make sure you look on our socials. We'll be pumping it all day today and tomorrow. Um, I'll be in Nashville starting Thursday practicing. I mean, I'm sorry, Columbus Thursday practicing. And so also what I've realized, I've tried to post content that is not golf and it never hits. Not once has it ever hit. I'm always like, this is funny. I'm finally going to make that make that broad in my horizon past just being the golf news guy. Can't do it. But anyways, <laughs> look at this watch cow, this. man. Look at this emo ass fucking cow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's his actual <laughs> hair. That's not a joke. No one styled it that way. That's what the that's what the cows look like in the Scottish Islands. Damn, fucking that's really incredible, funny. man. Just fucking yeah. emo, emo shit. cows. Have you guys seen the show Outlander? No, no. It's an epic show. You should watch it about the Scottish Islands. You won't watch it, but it's a good show. Um, I'm heading out to Ireland in a couple of weeks, so I'm excited to see that kind of terrain, yeah. What's the what's you know? the lineup? We're doing so. I'm actually not playing much golf. I don't know that. I th- I'm bringing my clubs. Well, real quick before you started, when you were talking about not getting your clubs over. I just signed up for ship sticks for my trip Good going move. to the Ozarks because we have we have a connection to get to Springfield, Missouri. It's a 35 minute connection. We might not even make it. Our bodies might not even make it. If you think that our clubs were going to make that, you're insane. We've made that mistake. You got to take it from us. We travel with our golf clubs probably just as much as the PGA Tour does. We are all over the place. 100 flights a year. Our golf bag is with us. The amount of shit that we go through with connections and the club's not getting there and it's just it it gets there at three o'clock in the morning and then you got to deal with this guy on a fucking shuttle who's going to bring it to your hotel and he's super weird. And then like you don't know if you got tipped. It's just a nightmare, man. Send those things. And I'm I'm done not sending them. So we're not doing anything the week before I'm leaving. I got all my buddies dropping their fucking bags off of my house. I'm going to put it in my garage and then I have a FedEx truck coming and picking them up from my house and bringing them to Ozarks. When I get there, it's just going to be there. They're, they're just going yeah, the to be, you know how nice it. that's going to be? What a that's business. That's the way to do it. It's, it's, yeah, they've, they've become, it's like, um, it's like Kleenex where, you know, you don't talk about shipping your golf clubs. It's just ship sticks. The, the, they're right. the ones who do it. Right. The name. Which traveling think- with them with golf clubs. I will, I've been traveling a little bit recently without them and it's a whole different airport experience. You're just walking you're out in your after your plane. Just walk. It's great. That's the crazy one. Straight to crazy. the Uber. Straight to the Uber. It's yeah. crazy. Um, but my feeling. itinerary for Ireland is um, yeah, we're doing Dublin for a couple days. I think like two nights, three days. We're staying in a really nice hotel, um, like right in the middle of the city. I think actually like, Taylor Swift like stayed at that. My buddy was in Ireland for Taylor Swift with like this girl and then they were walking around Dublin and like they were at this bar and I'm like, Oh, go check out this hotel that I'm staying at. Like I'm staying out with my parents. He's like, dude, you have like, you're in the best spot. He's like, I think he goes, the bartender just said Taylor Swift staying there tonight. I was like, Oh shit. I mean, it's not that nice, but it's like, I guess it might be the nicest one in that area by where the concert was. So we got that. And then we're staying at this like castle, this place, Ashford castle that I've heard 
outrageously amazing things about how did you book this did you just do it all yourself or did you work with like a travel agent i have a travel agent that's been helping me a little bit she helped us with um our italy like honeymoon and it's just it's amazing a couple like whatever it might cost a couple hundred bucks to have someone book every single thing for you i'm talking like you get out of your hotel you have a driver this driver's going this way especially in a foreign here, country here oh when we were in italy it was like here's your train ticket this is your seat like the driver's gonna take you from your hotel to your train. We didn't have to do anything. It was and it was in an, a perfect like oh. PDF with pictures of like it was awesome. That's was so great. nice. I'd say like one of the hurdles of going on a trip like that is like where do I where do you even start? That's why travel agents have a job. It's like their job. Um, it's great. It's amazing. So yeah, we're doing that. We're staying at this place, Ashford Castle. If you haven't heard of this place or seen it, go look it up. It's fucking phenomenal. Um, and yeah, I mean this is just a this is a big trip for my parents. Like this is their this is my mom's dream. So it's something that me and my wife talked about for a while to like be able to do this and bring them somewhere that they wanted to go to. And, and we were lucky enough. Years old. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's ridiculous. But that's the only day I have an opportunity to go golfing. So we're going to be there for like two nights, three days. And like there's a, one day that my mom and Hannah are going to go like to a spa and like just do a whole like high tea thing, like do like the OG like Ireland stuff, like so that she can experience it all. And there, we and my dad could golf. And um, but. The problem is on the west side of Ireland, I don't know if there's that many places to go to. It feels like it's all north, east, and south. Like I've looked kind of on this map of top top golf courses near Ashford Castle, and I really haven't found something that like feels like it would be worth playing. Like there's a couple like local courses, but it's like I'm not playing a Parkland golf course in Ireland. Like I need to no. see fucking I need I need fucking the Valley real Bunyan. Deal. You need yeah, water. That, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe we'll play. Maybe we won't. My dad's still recovering. So, and then we're doing that. And then we're going to Galway, which is just like, I've heard a great little seaport island. And it's super just like blue collar. Everyone feels like, you know, everyone's like loving all the tourism there and very, very like tight community. Cause one of my buddies just got back from a honeymoon there. He said that was his favorite part. So I'm, I'm pumped. Maybe I'll see Shane Lowry over there, Rory McElroy. I don't know. You just run into Irish people. What better way to enjoy the Olympics than to invite the boys over and play the course while you're watching the action? Mm. With Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, you have the mobile launch monitor by your side and a golf simulator that you can easily take to the course or set up at home to play and practice. So it's both. You can take it to the golf course or you can have a golf simulator at home. The award-winning MLM2 Pro offers 30,000 simulated golf courses to play 13 metrics and three video replay options to analyze your swing all for six ninety nine ninety nine. So under 700 bucks, you can get all of this stuff, which if you've done your research and you've, and you've looked into this, you're not going to find that price anywhere else for the stuff that they're offering you for six ninety nine ninety nine. If you're trying to get this type of technology, it's not going to happen. So make sure you jump on this from August 1st through the 12th. Rapsodo is rewarding MLM2 Pro users with some incredible prizes, including a virtual lesson from Golf Digest number one instructor, Whoa, Mark Blackburn. Mark Blackburn. Yeah. Mark their Go for Gold contest. Every nine holes played on the Olympic golf course, Le Golf National, is an entry into the contest, so there is no limit on entries. So if you've been in the market for this, go get your MLM2 Pro now. Play between August 1st and August 12th. And if you've played that Olympic golf course, Le Golf National, the most times, you're going to get a free virtual lesson from Golf Digest number one instructor, Mark Blackburn. Mark Blackburn, which is Danny Rapp's guy. He's really helped him out. He's amazing. He's, he's, he's incredible. Rap Soto is offering our listeners an inclusive offer by visiting rapsodogolf.com slash foreplay to receive a $50 gift card to rapsodo.com with a purchase of the MLM2 Pro. Whether you're looking to improve your game or improve your Saturdays with the boys, the MLM2 Pro is the solution for you. Play your way with Rapsodo Golf. Play without limits. Rory's playing for Ireland this week, which is, you know, that's kind of notable. did not do that a couple of years ago because of like the Northern Ireland. So he's always been like kind of um, coy about like where he's kind of from because northern ireland is very uh it's it's basically like an english it was you know the english basically put a bunch of english people into the north of ireland and then called it northern ireland um it's just kind of how it went ulster it's like i I was reading a lot about this because i was just in like a scotland england history hole um 
So the guy, the people from Northern Ireland are eligible to represent Great Britain or Ireland. And he's always been like, you know, I don't really feel like I'm anything. I, you know, I'm not really Irish. I'm not, I'm definitely not, you know, English. I, I, you know, I live in America. So there's, there's a lot of like different, it's not like, you know, John Rahm is like Spanish and that is, that is a huge part of his identity. Right. Rory's been in kind of like a interesting middle ground. So I just, yeah, I just thought it was interesting that he's playing for Ireland. this Cause week. isn't the school system that he grew up in like British. Is that yeah, how I mean, that goes? Most, most of Northern Ireland, I mean, it's part of the United Kingdom. So right. Great Britain, Britain is just the island, which is England, Wales, and Scotland. And then the United Kingdom is all of the countries that are like part of this thing that they've built. So it includes Great Britain, but it also includes Northern Ireland. Um, so I got yelled at in my DMs by someone because I'm like I, can't, like, I love going over to the UK or whatever. And then someone's like, you're going to Ireland. And like, he's like, Northern Ireland, Ireland is, is the UK. Ireland is not part of it. Ireland is not part of it at, in any capacity, and it's actually like the English have done some really horrendous. You're going to learn about this when you're there, I'm sure. Horrendous, horrendous things to the Irish. Like they made being Catholic illegal once Henry VIII turned all of England into Protestants. They basically made being Catholic like illegal in the whole country. They conquered the whole country. The Irish, the, the potato famine. They there was like millions of people died, and England had like plenty of food and just like wouldn't give like more food to the Irish and the you know. This is obviously a very dumbed down version. I'm sure there's some people being like, you're forgetting this part, you're forgetting that part. But yeah, do not tell oh. Irish people that you are British or that you're going to the UK because Ireland is a totally separate thing. People Here's would be question. stunned slash not stunned how little Frankie and I know about any of this. Like <laughs> also, here's an, and I'm, I'm Irish, right? It's like my mom's dream to go. I'm there. Irish She's as like well. Seventy percent Irish. I gotta sit down. I gotta I gotta go down like a YouTube wormhole and just figure out the history. It's of, pretty interesting, dude. It's I'm very sure Game it of is. Thrones. It's very Game of Thrones. It's For, very like this king feels like this he's is the a divide. dumb question. Yeah, this is me a dumb question. Let's do it. Dumb question time. Ireland, Northern Ireland, still all one country? No, nope. no. Nope. So it's the same island. So it's the Irish island. The northern six counties. There's, there was, there was this, basically the British conquered Ireland and they took a lot of the land from the Irish and they put a lot of settlers. They were actually called plantations, which I don't really know. Obviously, there's some meaning there and some reason why those were called plantations. Whatever. They had these plantations and they put a bunch of English settlers onto the, on, into Ireland and they carved out this thing called Northern Ireland that was Protestant. And that's really what it comes down to is Ireland historically is a Catholic country and um, Northern Ireland is a Protestant country, heavily influenced by British settlers who still have, they're called uh, royalists or loyalists. They are loyal to the crown. There's been crazy bloody fighting forever until I think it was called the Good Friday Agreement between Northern Irish and the, and, and the Irish. And that, that has been a very, very tense relationship that has calmed down um, in recent years. There's been like peace agreements, but no, they're separate. I mean, there might be like, you might be able to travel really between, between them, but Ireland is its own thing, completely separate from the United Kingdom, and Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. How do you know right, all so this if you, stuff? If you do it right, you're unbelievable. This is what I was talking about at the top of the show. Like, these guys just know more I stuff. Just, yeah. I just read a lot of, I just like, I, I've, I, yeah. I just you're doing read. the reading thing. I'm doing the reading thing. I just find it really Incredible. interesting. It's like, I'm, I'm on this app is... called Elevate to try and get my brain going. And I'm just not, okay, I can't retain the information like you quite do. His, history is just, it's, it's basically like, how would humans react if they could get away with whatever they wanted? Because yeah. back then it was like, it, it was, it's, it's all of the human emotion and the human instincts without any rules that you could just do. If you were like, the king could just steal someone's wife because he liked her, you know, or the, the right, king. It was, it was chaos. It was chaos, and like King Henry VIII, who kind of started this whole thing of like this the the switch between England going away from the Pope and becoming Protestant. Like he just he didn't like the women, the woman, and so he wanted a divorce, and so they wouldn't give him a divorce, and he just said, "Fuck you, we're done with the Pope." Like it's just crazy stuff, and that and that resulted in so many deaths and so many like so much chaos, and he just didn't give a fuck. Because the woman wouldn't give him a son, and that was the only thing that mattered to him. It's that's very Game of Thrones. It's so Game of Thrones, and then like a lot of these guys had like their their religious guy who was just like some rubber stamp guy who they would just do whatever the king said, and then say that like it was the you know the ordained by by heaven. It's just yeah, it's it's like Game of Thrones in real life, and so much. I mean, Game of Thrones is based on the War of the Roses, which is the Yorks versus the Lancashires. Um, which is really just like uh, Stark versus uh, Lannister. I mean, that's kind of what like the base of the whole thing is. 
it was like the war of the five kings there was a period of time where all these kings had different claims to the throne and they that's kind of what game of thrones is based off of so it's i just find it very interesting i get fired up talking about it you do you're fired up right now and i appreciate it the thing that's interesting yeah. to me is like Belfast to Dublin is an hour and 30 minutes, 98 miles Everything away. And that's like right the tip of Northern other. Ireland to like the middle of Ireland. So, yeah, that's why. I mean, that's not. And, and I think they're like when you build out a golf trip in Ireland, don't some people like go play? Uh, isn't it? Is it Old Head or whatever? What's the one that's like no, that's all an- the way? Royal County Down and Royal Port Rush are the two and Port Stewart. Old Head, I believe, is in just Ireland. But um, what's the one that's at like the end of the world where it's like I think it's, it's on Head. that? Fu- Isn't that as north as you can go? Uh, no, it's in, it's in Cork. It's, uh, oh, it's so as far south as, as you it's, can go. It's as far south as you can go. I'm looking at the map right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, everything in the UK is really close. Like, you know, the north of England is like Liverpool, right? To London, which is the south of, of England, is like a four hour drive. It's like going from it's like going and they have like completely different cultural uh, identities. Right. And it's basically like driving from Boston to New York. Right. We just went we just drove four hours to Brendan Jones's wedding, which was like not that far in New York. <laughs> it, was, it was still in New York. Yeah. So Liverpool to London, which is like Liverpool is like Scouse North, like Patty the Batty. And then London, which is like South Posh. It's it's 200 miles. It's three hours and 40 minutes by car. That's crazy. <laughs> and that's like the, that's like the cradle of the world of like. So that's like that was where it all. Yeah, it's just you getting me. You guys are getting me going. A little history podcast. Well, it's good. It's great. I mean, we got to start learning the shit. We talked. I don't know if we talked about this on the show or in a meeting, but we were like, could we ever do the European version of the Barstool Classic? We talked or about like it on the, the show. UK. Yeah, it's like we got to start learning this shit. If we're gonna go over there. Yeah, I, I could. I could definitely help with that process. I, I'm also a little bit of like an Anglophile. Like I'm just kind of obsessed with. I don't UK and Ireland. I just think it's like they speak our language, so it's like they're similar, but. I don't feel like I'm not Irish. I'm, you know, like Eastern European Jewish by heritage. So it's like all of this stuff is like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I, it's like it's familiar, but it's also different enough where I find it super fascinating. I like dumb question time, by the way. Like if I you just, you can't ask questions Safe like space. that normally. And people are like, oh, you don't know this. And it's like, I don't know anything. Yeah. So, all right. So, so Danny knows a lot of history, but you know what I do? <laughs> I shoot a basketball at a fucking hoop in let's my fucking it. house. Oh let's yeah. See let's it. see it. Oh, for whatever, however many times we've done it. I can't get the noise canceling off of my, oh, for three. my headphones, so I, I'm, I can't hear it bouncing right now. Did you warn Hannah that this was happening? Uh, no, but we have a contractor in the basement, uh, my guy, Sal. and uh, right. He's going to think I'm falling right now for sure because it, it's chaos. Like It hits the backboard. It, hopefully, I, I swish this. All right, let's see it. Here we go. Let's get one uh, on the board here, Borelli. Attempt number four. Oh! Oh! That was really close. That rimmed out, unfortunately, for the oh, listeners sat, on audio. It sat on the rim. Yeah. Do you sit there and shoot and make them like in no. when we're not recording? No, he never nope. practices. <laughs> Good. Nope. I like that. I do too. Have you found the perfect golf shoe yet? G4 can definitely help with the search. Their new drop has a style for everybody. Whether you're seeking traditional, contemporary, or something somewhere in the middle, G4's latest selection of premium footwear has got you covered. Riggs has the Gallivant or G-Lock with the replaceable soft spikes. Dan has the modern G112s. I have the athletic MG4 Pluses, and Trent has the versatile MG4 X2 Cross Trainers. We've all got our own version of them, and we all love them equally. And we interchange all of them from day to day because they are also comfortable. That's the biggest thing that I found with G4, and I know you guys would agree with me, that you could wear any of these shoes, from the Gallivanter to the G-Locks to the MG4 X2s to the Cross Trainers, and you don't have to break them in. That's a time of the past, man. You wear these shoes the day you take them out of the, bo- out of the box, and you can walk abandoned dunes with no issue there really is something for everybody and i know you listed off mine but i also love g112s the g18s just dropped i love those as well they've got so many great types of shoes that it's kind of hard to pick which one i want to wear but if you order a g4 pair of shoes for golf you are going to be thrilled because there are so many good types and like frankie said they are so comfortable so visit g4 to find out which shoe is for you I just listed off a bunch of them. You have a lot of options. Answer a few questions, and their footwear finder is going to do that work for you to answer which one is the best shoe for you. And don't forget to go to g4.com slash four. That's g-f-o-r-e dot com slash 
four F O R E for ten percent off your first order. Trust me, your feet will thank you. Are we doing close to the pen today? Do you even have a camera on your new phone? Alex spilled Alex Bush spilled gravy all over his computer and broke it. I'm not oh, even kidding. I, I mean, I'm I kidding did. about the gravy part, but <laughs> it was actually gravy. <laughs> no, what was it? What was it? What no. was it? It was an energy drink. Of course it was. Uh, some sort of soda. <laughs> All right, Bushy. Should we do some CTP? Yeah, let's do it. There he is. No well, gravy Last inside. week's uh, no gravy. It's all gone, dude. It's all in my work. It's all in the computer. He's not wasting a, a drop <laughs> of gravy. <laughs> you think there's anything <laughs> left, dude? It was all on here, and it's all gone. <laughs> last week's update we had. First question was margin of victory in USA basketball versus Serbia. They won by 26. So ranking trend at 19. Take that one. Yeah. yeah. Combined points, rebounds, assists for LeBron versus Serbia. He had 37. LeBron James. LeBron James. Uh, LeBron James. Uh, Frankie with the lowest of 40 had that. Come on. Long. We all kind of forget that there's so many stars. They don't score as much. Um, birdies are better for Billy Horschel is going to be a void because he, of course, withdrew on Thursday morning. After That's, we dude, were... the curse continues. Damn. The yeah, curse we, continues. We got a curse somewhere. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't Actually, know. Actually, did we have bizarre. one the week before? I mean, Biden. No, that, that, it was, no, that was two weeks before. We didn't have one last week. Did we had the Nelly Corda. What does she shoot? What does Scotty? We had we had we had what does Scotty Scheffler shoot when he got arrested? The day he got arrested. Stunning. <laughs> yes. Stunning. Um, and then the last one, Frankie. I don't know if you want to talk about the exact score, but or do you want to wait on Sabonic. it? Do you want to wait on that, or do you want to? Oh, I mean, it can, doesn't give can, away the result. We can wait but... on it for next week and just say it next week. Uh, yeah. I mean, the video just came out last night, right? So hold on to it. Yeah, let's hold hold on on to it. it. Cool. Yeah, we'll hold on to it. And honestly, if you want to know the answer, and if you were close, go watch Watch the the video video. and give us a subscribe and a comment. Comment that. Comment. Let's see. uh, We'll do a little test. Comment that you're commenting from closest to the pin. Like I'm here. I'm here because of closest to the pin. Shout out Alex Bush and his gravy. I'm here from close to the pin. Shout out to Alex Bush's gravy. Stop eating all that gravy. Or you could just have him put gravy. <laughs> just yeah, gravy. gravy, gravy, gravy. See how many gravy comments there are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it should be. It should just be, yeah, yeah. If you're listening to this portion of foreplay and you have yet, have you've yet to watch my video on YouTube or Rumble, comment gravy. I like it. <laughs> oh, see the over, score. First closest to the pin question, over under two and a half comments of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so standings right now, Trent has 47, uh, Alex 35, Frankie 35, Riggs and Dan 34. All right. And then. <sighs> Trying to hit 50. This week. All right. So I have them this week. First question. Trying to do a Robert De Niro face. I can't do you it. Can you do a Robert De Niro face? Can you I do a Robert De Niro face? That was you pretty can do good. really well. Are you, how, what do you do? You sure about just that? the flat. Yeah. The- you sure about that? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Sure about that? I can't really do it. <laughs> you do a really good one. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie's got a good De Niro face. Yeah. Sure about that? <laughs> All right. What's the first one? <laughs> All right. <laughs> God damn it. It's unreal. <laughs> Why did you bring that up? <laughs> Why was that so good? Have you done I was that looking before? at myself and then I went like this to like squint because the sun's kind of coming. I was like, kind of look like De Niro. And then I really went in for it. That's a good De Niro. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. All right. What's the first one? <laughs> All right. First question <clears throat> Olympic golf this week. I'm going to do finishing position at the Olympic golf competition for Tommy Fleetwood. Ooh. Oh, wow. Tommy, Tommy, that'd be kind of cool if he won. Tommy, but I don't know Tommy. if it would. I don't know if it would end the uh, why isn't he won talk. All right, let me see. Uh... Oh, so Tommy Fleetwood uh, <clears throat> came up to me at, at Troon and goes, "Oh, have you seen my son?" I was like, "No." He's like, "Oh, he wants to say like hello to you because you know he he thought you were really nice to him when he like played in that tournament. I made a video about him making the cut. So after Tommy." finishes on friday i go up and dap up the sun i'm like what's up man like you know when's your next event he's like wrong one <laughs> it was the guy <laughs> oh, sitting right no. next to him. oh damn he's got two kids he's got or two stepsons who look like the exact same i don't know anyways all right tommy fleetwood finish at the olympics trent gold hey! Hey! Damn, he's getting it baby first. he just said gold 
Gold. Yeah. Uh, Dan seventh, Frankie sixth, Alex oh. ninth. I would All like right. Tommy to win. That'd be awesome. That'd be I, really cool. You know what cool. it is too is I can picture it. That always mm-hmm. helps. You can just see him wearing the gold and be like Tommy Fleetwood yeah. won gold with no hat and those like and those locks just yeah. That's like that's, hair's a, like that's a, little, a good shout. His hair is like a little the gold medal. Like, but his hair is like a little um, sweaty and then it gets like drier and like more yeah. puffy towards the back because he just took his hat off. I can picture it clear as day. I could see it. Yeah, I could see it. He's biting it. Yes. All right. Second yeah. question. We have football back this week with the Hall of Fame game. Is that oh, right? That's this week. Yeah. On Thursday. Oh, Bears and Texans. Sure yeah. So this is going to be hard because it's preseason, but combined points in the Hall of Fame game, Texans versus Bears. The over-under is 32 and a half. That's so low. Yeah. I mean, it's preseason. They're, you're going to get... Is Caleb playing? I don't know. I I hope he plays a little bit. That'd be great. Sure about that? Sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> eh? you sure about God that damn. what are you doing what, what's the i gotta process? clip that and just send that every time you're pretty good yeah frankie is really good that's way it. too good <laughs> uh i also can't get that tonight will be the night i can't get that out of my head that's gonna over be in there for a long again. time <laughs> i love the over a guy Yes. Roan is so Roan is so good at doing the pop punk voice during pop punk oh my god all right, we're in Dan, Danny Rapp, uh, 27, Trent, 42, Whoa. Frankie, 33, Alex, 40. Okay. All right. Third one, USA basketball versus Puerto Rico on Saturday. Uh, Kevin Durant was eight for nine with 23 points. He didn't miss a three. How many points does he score against Puerto Rico? Ooh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. He is sort of isn't that, this isn't, is like I'm doing this. Yeah, isn't Puerto He's Rico really like this. part of the U.S.? How does that work? That's a yeah, third grade. I don't know. It's on the schedule. Have, it's all. It's all I, I got yeah. for you. No, it, it's happening. We <laughs> lost <laughs> them. I remember at some point, um, Carlos Arroyo gave us that work. I remember that. I can't give you that answer, my man. All right, you know, I don't know. Frank, Frankie Borelli, twenty points. Trent, twenty nine. Dan, sixteen. Alex, twenty two. Oh, and then the last one is Colin Morikawa round two score at the Olympics at Le Golf National. Par 71. Le Golf, Na- Le Golf National. What does that translate to? It's just the Golf National? Yeah, I think it's just the National Golf Course, yeah. Like National but Golf Course. Have, but they don't have like any links or club or anything. It's just Le Golf National. Uh, I'll look it up right now. The next Olympics are at Riviera, which is sick. So, I'm definitely going to go. That's right, LA. Holy shit, LA. that's awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going to go to those ones. I didn't even think about where the golf would be. Yeah. Yeah, it's just called Leg Golf National. Wait, where I was I was submitting my thing. What'd you say that where is it going to be? Riviera. Wow. Yeah. Riviera's got the Olympics in 2028 and then the US Open in 2031. How the hell are the Olympics going to be in LA? What's that what's that going to What do you mean they're in Paris? I know. I know. LA's a shit show. It's, a, it's a fucking it's just a lot going on over there. There is a lot going on. Yeah, trap and they're able to kind of m- shut down Paris. Mess. It seems like like they're shut. Like the the footage of Paris is stunning. Like it's a pretty damn cool venue for the. Olympics. It's amazing, like, dude. The fencing have, in that like it looks incredible. It's incredible, and they're like shutting it down. It's obviously not like there's not much like foot traffic aside from the people going to the Olympics. Like where do you even do that in L.A.? You know, like where's yeah, everything going to be? Like stationed? I bet you a lot of people will leave. Like a lot of like you know. Because it's so it's so hectic. I bet you there'll be a lot of people. Think who... they'll do anything like on top of or around like the Hollywood sign or anything. Like, do you yeah, think maybe like, like the equestrian like... or something. Yeah, there's like the, there's a big Griffith Park is um right at the in Hollywood, right at the base of the Hollywood sign, and they have space to do like outdoor events there for sure. They're definitely gonna do beach like the volleyball like on the beach, right? Or gotta do like Venice Beach or Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that'll be cool. Yeah, they're gonna do- SoFi is gonna be the kind of hub. I think it'll be fun. It'll be great. All right. Answers: Danny sixty-eight, Alex sixty-eight, Trent seventy, Frankie sixty-seven. All right, go low. And that's it. And that's it. Where's that guy been? I mean, I'm sure he's still doing well on Instagram, but he was he blew up during COVID. Oh man, he had Tom Brady commenting on his videos. Yeah, and then people like he just like doesn't have that voice, right? Is that what kind of happened? Well, he's he doesn't he doesn't speak that way normally. I think people started to realize that or something. I don't know. 
I, I, I really don't. I, I have. He was everywhere. Like every turn we went to, it was like he was on billboards and shit. He had like the crazy eyes. He had a TV commercial with Wilson Golf. I remember. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, it was nuts. It was all over the place. Manolo. I was like, we got to get this guy. <laughs> I was yeah. like, this guy's a fucking superstar. Manolo teaches is, golf. Really. I just don't see it pop up in my feed anymore. It used to consume my feed. Yeah. Algo but, just switches it up like that. I know. I saw someone say that uh, we're all responsible for our algorithm. I don't know how I feel about that. It feels a little bit yeah, meta. What does like that it. mean? I don't know. It was this. It was this video I saw of this like woman giving a speech to like everyone at like this company, and it was basically showing like how insane some like PC culture has gotten in like in uh, in the corporate world. And it was just like we are you are all responsible for your algorithm. Like basically being like, don't feed into anything that's like unethical, even on your social media, I because see. like by you like watching that, like it gives it views, and then it makes people continuously make that content like it's like (laughs) it's fucking the way she said it it hit me like a ton of bricks like i don't know i actually the algorithm's taking over my life i I can't avoid it yeah i feel like it's the other way yeah true it's like who is in control of that like sure you what you look at you probably get fed back to you we talked about that last show but i'm not choosing to do that De Niro. i'm not choosing to do that there, it, the algorithm is then doing that for me. So I guess you can, like, if you're like in the, if the mood strikes you to look at some jiggly boobs, like okay. you are now forcing your algorithm to then feed you jiggly boobs. You know, in some sense of the word, shouldn't we are. get the choice? Like, shouldn't there be an an algorithm and a non algorithm? Like, you should be able to opt out of the algorithm. Yeah, like I don't want to be, I don't want to see new content. Right, you know? I just want to see things that the way that they are linear. I guess that's the for you page and the the one that you follow. I guess no, but it's it's time. true. the 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 regular page is no longer chronological. It hasn't been that way for a long time. Yeah, you're just at the mercy. We are at the mercy. Golf Zone, the world's biggest simulator brand with facilities in 63 different countries, and one of those simulators happens to be in our very own Chicago headquarters at Barstool Sports. Over 7.5 billion shots hit every year in a golf zone simulator. I bet you a billion of them have been Jersey Jerry. 90 million rounds were played last year in a golf zone simulator. So now you're starting to hear these numbers. 4.8 million members. This means that they're doing something right. Like if you're talking to me about 7.5 billion shots hit 90 million rounds played in 4.8 million members. You've got a pretty damn good product. 230 plus courses available. Golf Zone does all the course mapping and flies a drone to map the hills and the floor. Uh, and the floor moves. Oh, this is the best part. The floor moves to make the hills. So a drone will map out where the hills are. And then when you're standing on that plate during your round of playing a simulator golf round, the, the, the ground will actually move. So if you, have a, if you have a ball above your feet, a ball below your feet, you're going to feel that. So, and they've been making these golf simulators, simulators with moving floors since 2002. So at this point, they've essentially perfected it. We love simulator golf, guys. We absolutely love it. It's a time to be able to hit golf balls when the weather is bad or when you have all your buddies over and you want to go to a place that is not a golf course. Maybe some people don't want to go out and play the, the whole thing. It's great to get those swings in and golf zone makes you feel like it's the real thing without having to leave your house. Yeah. If you've seen any clip from the Chicago Barcel office and you like the simulator in those videos, this is the place to go. And Frankie listed off all the numbers. They're doing something right. Uh, Simulator golf is great. You know, you can get your swing dialed in before you head out to the real thing um, and do it with Golf Zone because they're the best in the business. So visit GolfZoneGolf.com. That's G-O-L-F-Z-O-N-G-O-L-F, GolfZoneGolf.com to find a Golf Zone location near you. Like I said, they have facilities in 63 different countries. So you can find a Golf Zone location to go there. It's not just in your own house. You can go to these locations and play on these simulators. GolfZoneGolf.com to find a location near you. Anybody else got anything else going on? I'm highly addicted to tattoos. Getting another one tomorrow. You are? Yeah. You want to give us a a sneak peek on what it is? Nope. Okay. Be surprised. Be Be with the Crosties. The cross tees. Oh, I already got the. I already got the uh, the golfer guy right there. <laughs> this is a cool little guy. It is cool. Yeah, he's um, cool. No, I got some renovations being done in my house. If you're on the Long Island, if you're in the Long Island area, full throttle remodel. 
it's my cousin's like friend's little business, and they fucking dominated my house. What did you dominated? Do? I renovated my garage. It was like a it was a shit box garage. Like we just threw every, it's connected to the house and it had nothing on the walls. It had no insulation. It had no drywall, no fucking flooring. It was just like concrete slab. It was just all like dirty wood looking and everything else in the house was redone. And then you just go into this garage and we would throw like the a million billion cardboard bo- boxes that we get at Barcel Sports. We would just throw them all in there. So they came in insulated it put like they vaulted all the ceilings they put drywall up they put hi hats in they put a sliding glass door going out to my backyard in the back you got to see the transformation epoxy flooring with like diamond flakes on it it's crazy man crazy and then they redid my basement they made me a man cave the basement was shit it was like brown it looked the my basement from the old owners looked like one of those cat things that like people like the cats like jump around in those little like cat homes yeah where like the poles are all like, I don't like know what you call it, but shit. I know I can picture it. Yeah. That's what the basement looked like. And now it's like, wow. Also shout out to Trent for giving me that TV. 80 inch, right? 77, 77 inch. 77. I watched a little bit of the Yankee game on it last night when I got home and it's, it's a stunning picture. <laughs> it's a, oh, I mean, a it's great a, TV. It's a stunning TV. Just not, it's just, you know, tiny you can't New York City apartment. Three hours after you can't go to sleep three hours after watching it because like your eyeballs are, have been, completely fucked with how big and bright it is like you're too cl- you know what i mean that's Dude, it's basically a movie theater screen you're sitting in the second you're sitting in the second row i used to get a headache every night watching that tv last night i said to him like my i feel like my eyes have been overstimulated and i all i did was watch for like two seconds so nightmare but it's great so yeah full throttle remodel tell him frankie sent you look at this look at this fucking little like tv wall i got going on oh yeah that's nice yeah I'm dialed dialed this is a little bookshelf that is a door. You can get back there. Wow, that's cool. You pull that book and the door opens. That's really cool, dude. Yeah. Because there used to be a door and there's like an access panel back there. I'm like, how do I make this TV wall look like a TV wall and not just a door next to it? And then I looked up online. Yeah, I won't get free ads for that one, but it's a cool little product. The advertisement got me. It's like, how to make your house look like a millionaire's for only a thousand bucks. <laughs> it was like, holy shit. I was like, all right, let me get in there. TikTok ads are just highly effective. Oh, some ads are incredible. highly, highly effective. Yeah. I've bought so many Especially... massagers off TikTok and they never work. I just keep yeah. buying them. Oh, I bought the one where you, it's like a, you put it all over your head and it massages your eyes and yeah, it cools I that down one your too. eyes. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did recently buy the neck fan, <laughs> the Frank the Tank one. Well, Francis Is that Ellis what he was actually... wearing, by the way? Is that what he was wearing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I actually was first introduced to them by uh, another Frank, Francis Ellis, on a plane. Really? I was like, what are those headphones? And he's like, no, man, it's a fan. And I was like, oh, shit. It is great. I mean, Frank was using it as a sense of, like, you know, survival. It was 105 degrees out there that day. I mean, it blows air right into your... Right, <laughs> Bro, we apparently, were like, produce a lot of heat around the neck area. We were like, Frank, uh, it's like, it's right in the microphone, right? Like the noise. We're like, oh, do you yeah. think you'd be able to like not have that on? And he just looked at us and just goes, no. <laughs> like, no. It was the most dead honest, just like straight into your soul. No. Like we were like, all right. He's all like, right, you're going to have to just... clip that mic to my hat or something. That, that's not, yeah. I'm not moving away this fan from my neck. No, not happening. No, that's it, man. Go watch the video. Um, we have it out. I think they labeled it superstar versus super fan. I'm sure people will make fun of him. Oh, he's not actually a superstar. He only had 85 points last year. 20 other guys better than him. I can't wait for those tweets. He's a superstar. Won the fucking he's rookie a, of the year. He's got aura. He's got aura. He's the best player on our team. Sorry. I mean, I know the other guys on the team listen to this, but tricky. <laughs> it's I tough mean, one. Ever, do they know? Or do, do, are they learning that right now? That he's the best player on their team? De Niro. Are they learning that right <laughs> now? Or are they pretty good? <laughs> 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 i love it i love de niro right. de niro frankie's the, fucking awesome get the fuck out of here man all right all right hit it hard hit it hard hit it hard